What is happening, friends? Welcome back to another video. It has been a little bit. I have been busy, and we'll do a life update video talking about what I've been doing um, coming soon. But today's video is super exciting. I have these Recaro Sportsters that I've wanted for so long on any of my builds, really. Um, finally got my hands on a set from my good friends over at Keys Motorsports. I'm gonna have everything you need to do this link down below. This seat setup works on both the E82s and the E92s. So if you're interested in running this and probably some more, but those are what I know. <laughs> so the good thing is these work in both my cars, which is great. They were on back order, but to my surprise, they showed up in less than two weeks, which is awesome. And uh, uh, yeah, so I ended up going with the black leather with the black Alcantara. I think these look freaking amazing. My interior is red on this car. Not really married to the red, if I'm being totally honest. I think it's okay. I wouldn't mind actually converting this entire interior to black. I know that some people are not gonna like that. It's probably an unpopular opinion, but I do prefer the black interior on this car. I might just leave the door cards with a little bit of red just to offset it a little bit. Um, I don't think it looks terrible like that. I do have the rear bolsters or the rear side pieces that are also also red. Um, other than that, this car does have a rear seat delete though. So, you know, it's mostly gonna be black and we are doing the black headliner and everything. But nonetheless, let's talk about these seats, dude. I am so freaking pumped to put these in the car. So I went with the Recaro Sportsters because being that this is a coupe, I didn't wanna have a fixed back and I do want to drive this car as often as possible. However, I do think for my E92 M3, I am gonna order some pole positions. I think that would be a good alternative to these seats. And the great thing is if I wanna swap them, I can do so. So I also didn't want to go ahead and do like a red from Recaro because I wasn't quite sure how that red would match with the Fox red interior, at least on my E92 M3 and the red interior on this E82. Um, you can do other options, like go ahead and go to AMX, who does custom built Recaro Sportsters in any color you want, and they will match, identically match your interior. Um, it is dramatically more expensive, but you know, that is an option if you do decide to go that route. For me, I was keeping it simple. I knew I just wanted black. Alcantara with leather was gonna be my first choice. The majority of the interior on this car is Alcantara and leather, so I think it all kind of made sense. And again, the great part is I can swap these from this car to the other car and have zero, zero problems. So when I say Alcantara and black, basically what I mean is this is all Alcantara throughout here, and then the rest is going to be black leather all throughout here. It looks really, really nice. Looks very OEM, super, super clean. Minimal badging, just the standard Recaro on the top and the center. And then you also have a latch in the back to lean the seat forward if you want to uh, be able to get into the rear. Probably won't be accessing that too often, but it is there if we need it. All right, so first we'll talk a little bit about why I went with these seats rather than going with like, you know, Sparkos or just keeping these seats that are in here or doing some E9X seats in here. I've always wanted Recaros in one of my builds and finally I have the opportunity to do so. So I sort of sprang on it. Um, the seating position in the E82 drives me insane. It is incredibly high up. I'm six foot two. Don't know if that has anything to do with it, but it is a, um, yeah, you're in the clouds on this car and you're, pr you're pretty much right near the headliner and it's just a very awkward seating position for what I deem to be a now sports car and these will also lean me a little bit lower and put me in a better driving position and they obviously way more comfortable than these stock seats. The side bolstering in these seats is much more aggressive and I just think they're gonna look freaking amazing. So it was an obvious decision and now I get to try them for the first time and really compare them to the QRCs that I had, the Sparkos in the E36 M3 and then I also had some very cheapy Sparkos that are just, yeah, I think they're the R100s, I think they were. Um, those were not very good. But yeah, I've been looking forward to putting them in this car because man, it's it just, uh, I'm over these stock seats. We're also gonna go ahead and weigh them. I don't know if there's a huge weight difference. Maybe there might be. One thing I will note is that we will be coating off the airbag light. We will get an airbag light. Seeing that these no longer have heat, I went with the heatless option. We're in North Carolina, you don't really need it here. And then also um, these don't have airbags. So you're pretty much losing all of that, but that's where the majority of the weight is. So we will first get an airbag light because we are unplugging the factory airbag connections. However, I will have that coated out down the road. I grabbed two sets of the Mach Schnell Universal Adapter Floor 
mounts for these seats. So these will allow us to mount the seats into this car and in my E92 M3. So I also got these from Keys Motorsports. I'll have them linked down below. In addition to that, I ended up getting the Recaro sliders. So I will be able to move this seat up and down, no problem um, for both of the seats. So both of the seats have all of this stuff included. And then lastly, I ended up getting these little VAC seat receptacle adapters, I guess you could say. I think that's what they're called. And these are the low profile receptacle adapters. And basically these are gonna allow us to run our factory seat belt with the Recaros in this car. These will also be linked down below. They were like 40 bucks for a set. All right, so 135 converted to the 1M, a little 1M clone action here. And here is the current interior. So as you can see, I have some of the red in here, but um, I will be obviously losing the red up here. I don't think it's really gonna look too bad with having just the black up front and then having the red on the sides. I don't know, people just have to play it by ear and see how it turns out. Um, then we also have the red in the back. So if I do absolutely hate it, then I guess I just convert the entire car to black. I don't think I will. I don't think it'll be a problem. Um, and then also obviously the seats up close. These just look so freaking good, man. The design of them, everything um, just looks very, very clean and simple which I, they're a classic. Sportsters are just a classic. So it'll be nice in the future to have the pole positions and these, so I can really make those comparisons and decide which one I like the most. I think the one thing that I hear from a lot of people is that when they go to the pole positions, it's just kind of a little bit more of a hassle to get in and drive the car and sort of deters you from wanting to drive the car all the time, which is the last thing that I want to do. This isn't a track car, it's just a street car. So there's really no point in me going absolutely crazy like that. But We'll see. Um, I might order maybe just one pole position and see how it works in the E92 M3 and sort of make my decision from there. In order to recline these, pretty easy. You have this back here, you just twist it and it slowly reclines the seat back. Then you also have obviously these guys right here. So being that this reclining mechanism is on this side, this will be our driver's seat and then that will be our passenger seat. Um, I'm gonna get the scale out as well and show you guys how much these actually weigh, the stock seats versus the new ones. Hard to say how much, but I'd assume a lot. I've taken these out before. They're pretty freaking heavy, dude. This is, uh, for me personally, man, probably gonna be one of my favorite additions to this car. Um, seats are just a huge, huge game changer. And with the way that these stock seats fit in here and where you seat, uh, I think these are gonna be a major, major improvement. All right, that's enough talking. If you guys have any questions, leave them down below. Let's get into the video. So uh, these are T50s that are holding in the seats. Um, typically, I would disconnect the battery, but it doesn't really matter because we're not plugging anything back in. So this car is going to throw uh, airbag light anyways. So we're just gonna send it. There's a plug underneath the seat to do that. So T50, and you've got four of them, two in the front, two in the back, obviously. So this little tab right here, it's black tab, you pull it and it removes the actual plug. We get to pull this behemoth out of here. Just be careful of your paint and everything. <laughs> you don't want to damage anything when you're moving this. Here we go. Time we weigh these joints. What do you think the difference is going to be? Leave it down below. All right, so your boy weighs in 198.6. Getting thick. <laughs> the seat is heavy. 263.6. 198.6, 263. .6. Do the math, bro. I'm horrible at math. 65 pounds for the OEM stock seat. 233.6. Wow, 30 pound difference between our OEM seat and our Recaro Sportsters. That's quite a bit. 60 pounds throughout the entire car that we're losing. I'll take it. Okay. All right, so I was kind of looking at all this and you know, that's how it sits from factory like that. These would be our new mounts. Essentially are just like, it's like replacing this piece right here but for our Sportsters, so it'll just bolt up like that or on the inside, we'll see which one. We need to keep this entire assembly and I guess plug too, because we would want the car to know when the seat belt is plugged in. So my thought is let's undo everything from this harness here because you still have these plugs in here. So obviously anything to do with 
the airbags or the heat on this seat, we can just sort of discard or just leave on the seat. There's not like too in depth of a write up on this. So I'm just kind of like learning as we go along guys. So this now will plug back in to the car. All right, so here is the piece that we just pulled out and the plug for the seatbelt. And if we look at the original plug right here, it's sort of keyed for that portion, which is just like this L and we can just plug it right back in. All right, so I'm just kind of looking at everything here. And before we go ahead and jump directly into installing the entire seat and all of that, um, we're gonna go ahead and put in the floor mounts, which are the mock Schnell Universal floor mounts. So this is the alignment for these, the way that I have them set up. Um, I also have two sets, so one for that side, one for this side, and they're oriented this way, and then everything lines up right there. So those are the factory mounting holes. So we'll take our factory hardware and obviously put that through and that will lock the mounting plates into place. And then our new seats will go into one of these holes. These are all threaded by the way. So it just makes it super easy to install it. I've seen people put these seats in cars uh, a lot of different ways. You can use like planted, I think makes one. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten those down, torque them in, and then we can move on to assembling the slider onto our seat and the seat will go in the car. Obviously I haven't done this in this car before with these seats, but it is possible that I'll have to loosen these in order to make everything kind of fit perfectly when I have the seat assembled. So I have them tight for now, but if I have to crack them loose, I, I wouldn't be shocked. So let's go ahead and start assembling our seat. All right, seat is up on a bumper stand. Don't want to scratch anything. And now we will be working on the underside. So you have the inside of the slider right here. This is obviously going to hold the handle. So that's going to slide in here and then allow you to adjust it front and back. I've come to the conclusion that this is the proper orientation like this. So we will end up putting in our lower M8 bolt that's included. And then we'll throw in our other side and then put in the bar that allows us to adjust it. We'll slide the whole thing down and then put in the top bolts. That seems to make the most sense to me. However, I'm sure there's like a million ways to do it. Um, and these come with Loctite already on them. Yeah. I remember doing the Sparco ones and they were just, <laughs> they were so confusing to me. I will say that everything about Recaro is just built better. And I'm not saying that because I have Recaro now <laughs> or trying to flex or whatever. Um, I've just noticed that like all of the parts and everything seem much, much nicer. Yeah, so it's sort of like press fits in here. Yeah, so it pops in. Cool. So looking at their website, it looks like the seat belt mount bolts in directly to the Mach Schnell floor mount. And here's the hardware they gave us. However, there's no nuts. We're gonna have to come up with a different solution for that. Shouldn't be a problem. I think I have hardware. This, however, I don't know how I feel about it. If the seat is going directly on top of your floor mount, well, it's not gonna sit flush if you have a giant head of a bolt sticking up. So I think I've figured out how I wanna do this. Um, I took this back off and basically I'm mounting it on the underside here. So it's reverse mounted and that way you don't have to worry about, and this isn't the way that other people do it. They, they mount it on top, but I mean, looking at this, like, wouldn't you just want that below here so you didn't have to put washers up here? I don't know. That just seems like the most obvious way to do it without messing with your seating position, even if it is just a little bit. Okay, so here's where I'm at. Got this one in, pushed all the way that way. And then at this one in, pushed all the way this way. And I remounted the seatbelt a little bit forward on this one right here from the bottom up. So you can't see anything. It's nice and flush. Now it's a little bit forward from where the factory one is, but I don't think that's gonna be an issue. But now nothing is gonna be lifting up weird and it should be flush and good. Then we have our seatbelt plug plugged in. Yeah, I think it's gonna work. So let's put in the actual seat and see how things line up. It's a lot easier to handle, that's for sure. Dude, these are gonna look so good in here. Holy okay, so I just wrapped up the driver's seat. I changed a lot of stuff and I'm gonna go over everything that I adjusted and changed just a little bit to make it fit perfectly on the other side. But hopping in, these are unbelievable. The way that these place you into the car is perfect. Like 
perfect. I can't express it enough. On the previous seats, you'd be up here, super awkward. You are much lower in these. Man, it is good. It's really good. And uh, this is about where I would be, maybe a little bit further back, like right here. And of course, you can adjust back here, how far back you wanna be, or whatever. These also cup you into the car much, much better. And then also I have my seatbelt receptacle right on the other side, like so. Works just as factory, which is great. Turned out really, really good. I am super happy with this setup. They just look so good. These also came with a Recaro decal, so I threw it on the side. I think it looks kind of cool, but man, yeah, very happy with it. <laughs> I can't wait to drive. All right, so let's tackle the passenger side and I'm gonna show you guys everything about that one and kind of everything that I had to adjust on this side in order to make these work perfectly. I'm gonna show you guys on this side some things that I made adjustments to for the driver's side to make it work with my car, starting with the rails. So put these in just like we did before. And when we are putting on this part right here, one thing I didn't realize until I was in the car, is these little holes in the end right here. Make sure those pop into these right here. So basically just slide in like that, like that. Super important, it's in these little pegs though, because it needs that leverage. Basically what I had to do to make it work in my car, and like I said, this, this could be different depending on which model you have. I had to face these basically outwards, both of them outwards. Now I did see someone's video who had a 1M, this is just a 135, but they had a 1M, and they had to have it positioned both facing one way. He did have the pole positions though, so on the Sportsters, I guess you have to set it up like this. And basically what you wanna do is just measure the bottom of the seat rails on the seat and make sure it's exactly the length that you need. Mine was just above 16 inches, and then when you're laying your mounts out, make sure that the holes are exactly, obviously, um, where you want it, which they are. I ended up using the middle on this side and then the outside on this side. And that created enough room from the seatbelt receptacle in order to put the seat on top. And then everything flows nicely. So that's how I did it. Worked out really well. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this one in real quick. Wow. <laughs> Look at how good this looks, man. I have to say, this works really well with the red accents. Dare I say it works better than the red seats. I mean, come on, man. It looks super sharp. Now the only eyesore is this gray headliner and the pillars. But other than that, man, this thing looks so freaking good. Holy crap. Sheesh. Perfect seating position. Love that everything matches. Oh, man, it looks good. first driving experience with my brand new Recaro Sportsters in the 135, the 1M Cologne. And man, let me tell you, these seats are perfect. They were exactly what I was looking for. I haven't even had the opportunity to drive the car because I've just been so busy. I actually installed the seats about three days ago. So it's the first time getting out and actually driving them. And I've been driving the E92 M3 all week is so different getting into the E82, the one series versus the E92. They're just completely different cars, but they also have some similarities that I really enjoy with both parties. But these Recaro Sportsters put you exactly where you want to be in this car. Not too high, not too low, like the perfect, perfect level 
And the other thing I like about them is you can kind of move them around if you need to. You can move them over a little bit if you wanted it to be a little bit more centered into the cockpit. Right now I have it more centered with the wheel and I think it's perfect. This is probably gonna be the most like normal street style feel with this setup. But man, paired with the steering wheel, everything about this car, like all the characteristics with these seats, man, it's just, it's flawless. It's perfect, I wouldn't change a thing. Um, one thing I do need to do, obviously, is coat out the airbag light, which is gonna happen soon. I got my friends at Define Coating who are gonna take care of that for me. Ooh, <laughs> this car's so fun, man. I love this car beyond words. It's just, it's just the best. This car's my baby, man. I have so much sweat equity into this thing, and um, yeah, it's just one of the projects that you, you will never get rid of. <laughs> And mark my words, I will not get rid of this one, guys. I know that's hard to believe, but I promise you, this one, this one's staying for life. But yeah, sitting in these seats, man, they are extremely comfortable. I was a little bit worried about going from an OEM seat to a race seat, like the Sportster, that uh, I just thought maybe they would, they would be a little bit too firm. Like maybe I wouldn't enjoy them as much for longer drives. I don't see any issue with these seats, man. They're, they're extremely comfortable. There's enough padding, but they bolster you in so good. Um, your thighs, your back, like the sides of your stomach, everything just completely just locked in tight with this seat setup. And it's, it's just perfect, man. Like I wouldn't change a single thing with this setup. I think it's a good street track option. I know some people were asking like if you're a little bit bigger, would they fit you? I don't know. Um, probably not to be honest because yeah, I'm 6'2", I'm 185, 190 pounds, and you know, th these are tight. These are tight on me. So if you're a bigger guy, you might not want to run these. Um, but man, for me, flawless. Like they're, they're just, they're exactly what I needed uh, in this car. And it just, it was the one thing that I didn't enjoy about driving this car. Like everything else in this car feels sports car but the OEM seats just felt like everyday traffic. You know what I mean? So it was the one thing that this car was really lacking was like a good seat setup. I shouldn't say the one thing. A project like this is never really finished. We have a lot to do, but man, these were uh, just the upgrade that I felt like this car really needed to just take that driving experience like that much higher. But I have been busy, busy, and I've been driving the E92 M3. I daily drive that car now. I let my girlfriend take over the VW Tiguan. And uh, yeah, and man, I'll tell you what, E92 M3 is definitely a daily drivable car, manual transmission and everything. And I love it, it's, <laughs> it's so fun. But now that it's my daily, I'm like forced to, and I love it, I love it. We'll see how that maintenance goes in the long run, but so far, she's good. So the, the little oneer, the 135, it needs um, basically the next big overhaul for this car. The 135 needs a good, good suspension overhaul. Everything, even the coilover setup that I currently have. I, I want to do. I want to go bigger, better with this car, and do something that's a bit more rigid and um, street track. Right now, it's all OEM and just it's a bit floaty. It's not great, but we'll get it there. It's not bad, but it could be a lot better. And the M3, the M3 is on rails, man. It feels so good when I'm driving it. But this car just has a lot of like float to it, you know? Like it could be better. When I upgraded the control arms to the Turner control arms on the M3, it made a huge difference. And even with like the Olins and everything, the Millway camber plates, like that's really, I'm gonna mock that exact same setup on this car because it worked so good. I love it. It's like the perfect street track setup. I know I keep saying that, but it really is. And that's kind of what I'm always trying to like go after. I want a street car that I can like daily drive, but I want it to feel like a track car when I want it to feel like a track car, you know? And um, that's really what I strive for in a lot of these cars. So it's no different with this build, and that's what I'm gonna go after. And I think we're gonna get it there. The other thing that's gonna happen uh, next week is I have some really fun additions to this car. The first one, I'm doing the rear hub conversion on this car, which is, I think, a pretty interesting one. Basically, what I did was I ordered all of the components for, well, I'll put the part numbers down below, but basically what it does is it changes out the rear hub to allow 10 millimeters more of wheel and tire in the back. 
So I do have another set of wheels that I'm gonna be running on this car and I'm hoping to get them on next week, but I test fitted them and let me tell you something, they are too good, like perfect for this car. I think long-term goal, you know, I would like to see a big single in this car on this motor, but um, ultimate goal is really to put an S65 in this car. I think it just belongs in it. It's actually surprisingly a pretty easy swap. Um, the front subframe and motor basically bolts right up to the E82 chassis like it was meant to be. This is fun for now. <laughs> but the setup right now is is super good. It's uh, I've just been having a lot of fun with this car, you know, ever since I had the little hiccup with the uh, low pressure fuel pump issue, which really wasn't like a defective product or fuel pump. It was just a poor install. Let's call it what it was. It was just a poor install. Uh, maybe things moved around a little bit, maybe not, who knows. But nonetheless, I'm really, really happy with the car right now. And just about driving at this point. We just enjoy it from here on out. Just my favorite part. <laughs> you can't not help but just smile when you drive this thing, man. It's, it's just it's just too fun. It's just too much fun to be had in this car. This car's still on a base map. Base tune, nothing special. Still have to finish up the port injection, throw in the other low pressure fuel pump, and then hook up the reflex, and then retune with Chris CD919 and hit the dyno. I've been uh, able to enjoy the cars and faces a little bit more, which I like. I'm not like speedballing through the process of modifying these cars. Man, this car loves boost. <laughs> I'm a sucker for the S65, but I gotta say, dude, these MP4s are a lot of fun. They are a lot of fun. Um, it's it's so funny because like when I get in the E92 M3, it's such a pig. Like it, it's not fast, but it it just controls and handles very very good and feels amazing when you drive it. And this car is like it's more rowdy because it's making all of these crazy noises and it's pretty fast for what it is so far. But it doesn't feel as good as the E92 M3. And I think that's really just because of wheel tire setup, suspension modifications. Like I have that E92 set up really, really good. Um, I also have the F8X brake conversion kit going on the E92 very soon. I have everything for it. I just haven't had time to put it on. But man, both cars, having both cars in the garage, it's, it's really like a treat having those two. <laughs> I love it, dude. <laughs> to the guys over at Olin's and told them, you know, I definitely, uh, they reached out after seeing my United 2 video, which is really cool, but I told them, man, I, I gotta do the same setup on the um, E82, because it was just, it's so good, like, paired with the Millway and everything, the way that car set up, man, oof, it's dialed. so fun. These seats, no sliding around at all. I think the Alcantara really helps with that. I mean, obviously, like, the design of the seat and the bolsters and everything, but the uh, the Alcantara is like, no no slip whatsoever, man. You're, you're locked in. It feels great. See, just around corners, it's a little, like, just not quite where it needs to be. It's a little too, too much play, it feels like. It's probably got some bad bushings in it, too. We just need to stiffen everything up. I think 
thinking about dropping the rear subframe and doing rear sway bar as well. The E92 M3 I'm a bit spoiled because it already had uh, rear sway bars and sometimes people don't want to do all that because you have to drop the rear subframe. But you know, if you're doing that, if you're going in and you're dropping rear subframe, I'm doing all the bushings. I'm doing everything. <laughs> We're replacing all the arms. We're going balls deep because this is like, why not? You're already there. You might as well. Where this car makes up to where the E92 lacks is the transmission. Um, this car has a completely refreshed transmission. The gears feel really good. It's got a short shifter kit. It's got a uh, DKM twin disc clutch. Like everything in the E92 M3 is factory and it's got 93,000 miles. It feels horrible. Like that is the only part of that car that I don't enjoy driving. There was a giant piece of wood in the road over there. Uh, it's just the transmission side of it. And, it, and it's getting worse too. Now that I'm like daily driving it, I'm like, uh, have some issues. So I think that might be up next for the E92. She is fun though, boys. This thing is so fun to drive. I mean, I don't care what anyone says, you are not getting this experience, this same kind of experience out of any of these newer cars. Like, that's just why you haven't seen me go for like the G80 or the G87. Just, uh, I don't know, man, these old cars just steal my heart. First drive, a success with the Sportsters. Man, I think I made the right choice. I'm actually really glad that I opted for these over the pole positions. I think the poles would have been just a bit much for a street car. And these, you just really get the best of both worlds, you know? And the fact, obviously, that I can still get in the back, do what I need to do. So those are the pieces that I ordered in black. I think that's gonna look a lot better, a bit more uniform. But man, these are just so good, dude. I'm obsessed with them. Very OEM, very sport focused, classy looking. Yeah, I think we did the right choice here, guys. So to show you guys the fitment with the wheels, the 513Ms that I have on here right now, it's not bad. It's actually really not bad, but we do have quite a bit of room and i think that we can just get a much better setup on this car especially with the new wheels and once we do the hub conversion so that'll basically give us it's going to push it in about 10 millimeters more which gives us more clearance for bigger tires bigger wheels and just better look <laughs> overall but other than that man we're just enjoying this car and i'm just driving it proof that i'm just driving it do have some little discrepancies on the front. I haven't even PPF this car yet, which is also crazy for me because I usually do that right away. But um, yeah, I just haven't gotten, I just haven't had time to bring it into the shop and do the whole PPF and detail thing. I do plan on doing it down the road. I'm just gonna do the whole front end and PPF. But um, yeah, I think this car is, you know, it's just made to be driven. So I've just been, I've been driving it and enjoying it. Man, it looks so freaking good. The biggest eyesore right now would be that headliner. Ooh, that gray looks really bad in this car. So I am going to tackle that probably sooner than later. But yeah, we'll see. We have a lot of stuff coming up for this car and I'm super excited. I just wanted to give you guys my initial thoughts on the Sportsters. 10 out of 10, I knew that I'd love them. And yeah, it's, it's a 10 out of 10 for me. And I'm glad that I tried these because now I know in the future, these are the ones to go with. Still considering poles for maybe the M3 or something different, but for this car, I think the Sportsters are just just what the car needed. Huge shout out to the guys over at Keys Motorsports for helping me source these. They were on back order. They showed up in two weeks. I was so excited when they showed up, but I got everything from them. The VAC seatbelt mounts, the Mach Chanel floor mounts, everything all sourced through Keys. So if you guys need any of that stuff, I'll have it linked down below. But as always, I appreciate you guys watching the videos. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.